the big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stand. For people that don't know, your brother was handling your finances, right? That's right. And um, this was this was highly publicized at the time. Yeah. Uh, was stealing money from you. Yes. Even though you were... Siphoning millions and millions of dollars what for a, years. Ha, by the way, how... Like, and I'm not trying to relive trauma, but like, how do you... Dis, like, is there a mo, is there a phone call? Where, like, here's what's going on? How did you discover it? I, yeah. I woke up one morning. Mm -hmm. um, I was buying a home in California, and because I was buying a house here, my business was still run out of a PO box in Massachusetts. And I knew that once you're a resident, you can't really do that. The IRS doesn't, you know, because it's less taxes in Massachusetts and all yeah. this stuff. So I ended up talking to my brother and saying, I, you know, I'm, I found a new business manager out here. You're going to have a different position in the company. You know, you can do fulfillment center stuff or merch or, and I'm just going to do my stuff out here because I'm buying a home. He did not like that because he'd been sending me fake statements for maybe 10 years. Typing up? Yeah, up. he would type up on Microsoft Word statements. That's a plug for Microsoft. I actually am one of their <laughs> spokespeople. I've been working with Word for a lot of years. I also work with, <laughs> I also work with Excel, and I just want to shout out to Microsoft. Uh, anyway, back on. <laughs> They're so excited for that. Thank so you. I, I wake up oh on a Monday life. morning. This is, this is what's really crazy about it, is that on, a, on the Friday, I wrote my, I loved my brother. I really did. He was, he, he was my first real best friend in my life and I wrote him a letter on the Friday because I knew he was a little trepidatious about me moving the the business I told him it's hey it's gonna be all right everything's gonna be great um, I've got some new ideas I think I know how to you know come back with a with a, a you know Rocky II moment and uh, he wrote to me on that Friday and the last three words he ever said is my brother he said to the future and then Monday I woke up and I literally sat up in my bed, turned to my girlfriend, woke her up, and I go, I think my brother stole all my money. You just had this How feeling? did you know? Yeah, uh, I think because a lot of things had added up and my new business manager that I just hired, he was also getting pushback from my brother to send the materials that- Yeah, like transfer it, things over. And it was, start, even my new business manager was like, this is you know really off kilter. Usually people will send a me, and it, and it hit me. And I went down to Bank of America on the corner of Crescent Heights in Santa Monica. And I went in, I talked to the manager, she brought me into her office, and basically it was like, yeah, there's nothing in your corporate accounts. She couldn't, I couldn't even get into my own accounts. I gave her my federal ID number, I gave her, she goes, none of these work. He'd given me false, <gasps> yeah. I'd never looked in my bank. Okay, can I'd I? Never, I'd never looked, can I we, just trusted him. Can we go oh, to the next why thing? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. So, at that like at <sighs> that moment this because this is like this is like yeah. a fuck these are you add suspenseful music I, that's to the this. thing this oh is this is the movie God. i want to watch yeah. so <laughs> this is the shit i love so what okay so what like who next like you got you talk to the businessman your current businessman you're like so what do we do like what do you do call yeah. the fbi so i um, i called the attorney general's office of massachusetts i like knew a lot of those people because i'd done so many benefit shows yeah and, you know and i called them and i said listen uh I said, you're gonna wanna find my brother. I said, not only because of what he's probably stolen from me, I said, but probably what he's stolen from the state. Mm. And then they were like, like, we're on ding, it. Ding, 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 <laughs> yeah. And so they got him, they arrested him and his, his wife, and I ended up uh, having to go into court a year later and oh. read what is known as a victim impact letter in front of this, uh, in front of my brother. Who I didn't Holy see. shit. Yeah, it was, it was like a movie moment. It was really unbelievable. And he's sent to prison? Yeah. And I sent him to actually. He was a before he worked for me. He was a corrections officer. He was a he was what a, at the prison. I sent him back to what? I, no. what? I hired what? him and got him out of the jail to work for me. I made him quit and said, "I know I'm a working road comic." I go, but I will figure out a way to pay, get an umbrella and get your because I because I knew he was getting a lot of from the state protection or yeah. you know, dental and blah blah. Yeah. So it's weird because that was the cat. He quit the prison to come help his Ironic. little brother. What did I do? I worked harder because now it's right, like, I got to make it's it like a response. It's like having a kid. So would I you know? go back and change any of this? Zero. Literally everything was something that led to a more fortunate situation for me, which is and, and crazy. Essentially, I'm, I'm guessing here, but what motivated him was greed, right? He just had access to it. Entitlement. That's what the, uh, the judge said. And I, I felt it. 
And seeing him and looking at him that day in the in the courtroom was surreal. And what did because he do? Because he looked with like a shark. Mind? He just had dead, nothing eyes, nothing, no emotion. I didn't look at a person who I knew. I I was looking at a stranger. We had different dads, mm-hmm. different dads, same mom. Different. There dads. you go. That yeah. explains it. I'm telling you, is that <laughs> there's right? There's a lot to that. Yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. Was his dad a psycho? Psycho. Yeah. yeah. The whole was, family had impact disorder. Wait. What? Wait. Had what? Impa- like impact. Different impact disorders. What is that? Oh, from <clears throat> like uh, people who don't know any kind of like um, uh, his dad. One time in a movie theater, the kid behind them wouldn't stop talking. He turned. He smacked a stranger's kid. That's impact disorder. It's like people that don't know, like, oh no, there's a you know, decorum with how you treat each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they all had some bad DNA. And what? so he, his wires are crossed, basically. His wires were definitely crossed. And had you seen, his, like, did you, any, any indication that growing up, like, I don't know, Timmy's kind of fucking. Yeah, and like later, I could look back and be like, oh shit, okay, that was that. You put it together. Cold, yeah. Uh, you know, a sociopath is somebody who, you know, they, um, they're like chameleons, you know, they, they know how to become what you are or right. that? I don't know what just happened. Nothing at all. Dang. I don't know. Keep talking. I don't, know. I don't like that. They're, they that can be anybody. Me. Go ahead. Loving okay. fathers, oh comedians, podcasters. Who do you want me to be? <laughs> <laughs> Will you be my brother? Of course. Oh, can I manage your, your accounts again? Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. So continue. So he was he he would be whoever. So he was like your be- so I your, put him in jail. Your bestie. Put him in jail. Put his uh. wife in jail. She was. They were in cahoots. Um, what did he spend on? Yeah, oh, that's it, fascinating. You know what? They just they. Too. It's called squirreling. They just hit a lot of it. I have money actually. There's probably I should make treasure maps because I know that there's some places where there's some money. I stash them. Stash did a lot of it. Did you get to recoup? Okay. I got a, a little chunk of it. I got like about a year and a half later, the police opened up a wall in his house <laughs> and found $800,000. <laughs> and the cops called me and sent me a picture of my email. They go, got, look at this fucking money we got, kid. Coming back to you, kid. <sighs> um, wow. And so a little, oh, but then they had to hold that. So I didn't see that until like years later. He also didn't pay my taxes. So cool, I had cool. to pay more in penalties. No. Yeah, I couldn't cool, get cool, that cool. money from the IRS until I paid what he did to me's penalties and then once they convicted him then this irs actually sent me a check like okay yeah now now it's good you're right it was his responsibility but what's what saved me after is he took everything he basically took you know tens of millions of dollars from me and i had three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars in stocks something you can't pull out easily. He he was like pulling everything out that last year once I saw the uh, a forensics audit, they call it. Uh, I got to see kind of what he did and how he did it. Um, but he couldn't take that stock money. So I took that stock money. And now that's 07. We're in the worst housing crisis in the, you know, that the country's seen in however many years. Yeah. People were like holding on to their money. I took that money and I started a rent, uh, renting arenas. So the arena tour was, I rented those arenas. I rented ah. those like you rent a hall. So you didn't do the traditional promoter deal, like give me, like it was no. like, I'm paying for it. Yeah. And then I will, I incur all the risk, but I get all the reward when it's great. Sells. Exactly. It was like, okay, here's the door deal at uh, this, you know, 15,000 seater. I played a hundred arenas and what I did is every month <laughs> I'd rent three or four more because I was starting to, you know, get this money back. And what was really honestly amazing, the thing that that uh, touched me the most was I knew I'd already hit like this upper wave. I knew I had fans and fan, most of your fans are going to be your fans if they like you and you don't fuck up. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't ready for the outpouring of support and how many people actually did spend their hard earned dollar. Yeah. So they came, they saved my life in mm. a sense. And it, gave me a new outlook on like for the rest of my life I'm never going to do a movie or a, a TV show or anything that I don't feel like is truly uh, something that I can feel engaged in it's never going to just be for a couple of bucks right because I don't want to sell you know people that like what I do short oh you just watched a highlight from your mom's house and if you want to see more just watch one of these videos or highlights here and definitely subscribe here that way you can be kept abreast of all the brand new yes i said the word tom don't judge me with your eyes try it out